Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm an On One Photo Raw 2021, and I thought I would do, um, for lack of a better word, kind of a speed edit. This is basically a quick and dirty edit of a street scene that I shot at night. Here's the photo. The only thing I've done is straightened it and cropped it 16 by 9. But you can see the photo, and I call it a speed edit because these kind of photos I take at night when I'm wandering in a city, like I don't necessarily, um, as much as I enjoy editing, I don't always want to spend a whole lot of time. I just kind of want to do a kind of a quick and dirty edit, I guess, for lack of a better word. And I just want to accentuate a few things, get moving, because usually I have a lot of them, and it's just kind of fun to just kind of run through them. So how I approach this is basically, you know, I know I want to accentuate a few things. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, maybe pull the highlights down because of that building, and I'm going to pull up the midtones and the shadows a little bit something like that so you can see it better. I'm gonna cool it off a little like that and I think I'm gonna leave tint the way it is. So I think already we've got a better looking photo. There it is before and there it is now. I love that I caught that guy in stride, like his legs are perfectly spaced the way they're done. I just sometimes you get lucky and I happen to get the snap um, at the right time. So what I wanna do next is bring up a few key things. The first one is HDR look. And honestly, that's a one and done. Like, I'm happy, I'm done, I'm ready to move on. So um, I've just applied that to the entire photo. And next I'm gonna apply dynamic contrast in the exact same way, just across the entire photo. In these two edits, if you notice the foreground, so the street and the building, much brighter and of course crispier. And uh, that's because dynamic contrast. So if I turn this off, there you go, a little bit darker and a little bit less crunchy. And then HDR look has a bigger impact. There you go, there it is. Uh, before that, and then if I add HDR uh, look back and dynamic contrast back, I'm kind of back in the crunchy mode, and I love using these two filters for that because, I mean, this scene to me, it's a downtown, it's an evening, I mean, it's a neon uh, neon and, and kind of painted tattoo parlor, so uh, at least I think it's a tattoo parlor, true blue, I think it's tattoos. Anyway, uh, yeah, tattoo, it says it in the window. I don't know, I don't have any tattoos, but uh, anyway, that is uh, kind of the first thing I want to do is just kind of crunch that up a little bit, and I'm not really worried about the sky, and I'll explain why in a minute. There is some noise. I shot this at uh, ISO 1000, and I just added dynamic contrast and HDR look across the entire photo, so they're going to crunch up the sky. In your own edits, you might want to brush it in, or actually, it'd probably be quicker to just erase it from the sky, so just keep that in mind. Something to think about. Uh, the next thing I want to do is get into color balance. And what I want to do is in all three highlights, midtones, and shadows, I just want to get a little bit more blue. So for me, that's usually around a 230. And then I just drag the amount a little bit. And then I go to midtones and I get about the same thing. Remember, this is a quick and dirty edit. So I'm not doing a lot of fancy things here. I'm just kind of sharing how I approach this. Uh, and then I'm going to shadows and doing a similar thing as well, like 230 or so and bringing that up. And all I'm trying to do is get some of that really orangey warm color out of the scene. So there it is with color balance. There it is before. You can see the sky's a little bit darker and the foreground's a lot more orange. And after I've muted that orange a little bit, I think it looks better because the building is so blue. It looks almost like some of the blue is reflecting off the building and coming into the street. The sky's a little bit dark. That's okay. Um, I don't mind because I'm about to fix that. The first way I'm gonna do it is add a vignette and what I'm gonna add is just the edges. And so this is basically a little bit like a square frame. You can come in and adjust the size if you want to, uh, to make it you know, more or less. I don't really wanna do that. I'm just gonna leave it at, uh, actually I think it was at 35, wasn't it? Well, I don't know if it was or not, but I'm gonna put it at 35, so how about that? So a little bit of a vignette there, there it is before and after slightly framing that. And in fact, I'm actually gonna pull that back to about 40. What I don't want to do is lose vis visibility into that guy. He's walking out of frame, which isn't necessarily ideal, but the way this scene was uh, you know, presented itself to me as I, I kind of rounded a corner and saw that, saw the guy, I kind of ran to get in place because I wanted to catch him walking by. Um, anyway, he's, he's headed out of frame, so I don't want too thick of a vignette because generally speaking, when you have a subject in motion like that, you want to leave room in front of them uh, to walk, right? You want to give them kind of room to roam through the photo. I don't really have that situation here, but I like it framed with that arrow in the left corner, this guy kind of walking across it. So um, it is what it is, but that's why I'm saying I want to be careful about the vignette in that uh, corner. And the next thing I'm going to do is get another vignette, and I'm going to get big softy. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say invert, and I've got a really big brush. I'm going to paint in, and all I'm going to do is come along over here and just paint it in. 
uh, and I'm just painting it in in this area of the photo. So you can do that. I recommend being careful around the edges unless you don't mind, uh, but you gotta be careful like you don't accidentally paint some uh, vignette on the building because I don't wanna darken that. I just wanted to darken that other section. Let me hit Z to get out of that. And you can see my mask is gonna be something about like that. So, uh, you know, again, you can be more precise if you want to, either by being slower if you're not recording a video or by using one of the other masks that are more accurate. But if I turn this vignette off, if you look at the sky, there it is a little bit brighter and afterwards there it is a little bit darker. And now that I've got that in place, let me close masking, I can actually increase the size, or excuse me, decrease the size. And you can see I went over the building up there. It's getting a little bit darker uh, and I missed a spot point is be careful as I said but you can further darken that once you get your mask in place so you can go like this and really make it uh, look like uh, you know pure darkness which actually works pretty well here as long as I go clean up some of the edges again probably not the best brush using the general masking brush but that's the idea and that's really a speed edit other than needing to clean up my vignette mask I was able to use vignette twice dynamic contrast and HDR look to uh, get the crunch that I wanted and then color balance to fix the colors and I went from uh, that to that, which I like quite a bit. And if I do the sliding window here, you can see we really brought up the, the detail and the light across the street and of course the building and my subject, this gentleman passing by here. Um, and I darken the sky to keep any viewer interest or uh, you know visibility kind of away from that section. I think you're naturally gonna be drawn to the stuff that's brighter anyway over here, but uh, just kind of how I think about it. So. That's it really, just a quick and dirty edit, a few key filters focused on a couple of key things. And there's so much color in the photo with that shop, with all the neon and the sign. And then there's, I think, great lines. You got vertical lines over here with the telephone pole or electric pole, I guess, um, and the building. And then you got the street and then you got the curved uh, arrow in the street and the guy, there's just a lot going on. So I tend not to overdo my edits um, in those kind of photos because I feel like there's a lot happening and I just kind of want to show the scene the way it is with a little enhancement. That's a quick and dirty street scene edit, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you soon and adios.